Tate Martell is one of the most polarizing quarterbacks in college football history. Some people hate him, some people are rooting for him, and I feel like most people are somewhere in between. He was a five-star recruit who was offered in middle school and had all the hype in the world. With that hype came a big-time ego and a big-time personality, and combining that with the fact that he played for one of the top prep schools in the country made Martell a very polarizing figure. After getting nothing done at Ohio State and riding the bench at Miami, Martell got one last opportunity at UNLV, where unfortunately things did not go as planned, and he is now done with the game of football. In today's video, we're going to take an entire look at Tate Martell's career, go through his story, his time at Ohio State and Miami, and why he ultimately failed at UNLV. I've already done a video on his rise, so I'm going to use that clip for the first half of the video, and then the second half we'll be talking about what ended up happening at UNLV. So this will kind of be like an add-on to the first documentary I made. Let's go ahead and get started and throw it back in time with his story. Tate Martell has always loved football, and his passion for being a quarterback started at a young age. He grew up in Southern California and had big goals. By the time he was in fifth grade, he had read about a certain quarterback who had committed to USC as a seventh grader. In case you aren't familiar with who that is, his name was David Sills, and he was seen as a prodigy, committed to Lane Kiffin early on, but he would eventually kind of fade out and didn't live up to the hype as a quarterback. Luckily for Sills though, he ended up going to West Virginia, where he became a really good wide receiver and one of the better pass catchers in Mountaineers history. Martell, on the other hand, wanted to do big things. When he heard about Sills, he had this to say, quote, oh, a seventh grader commits to USC, and at first I was like, what the heck, that's crazy. And then I remember saying, that's my goal. Martell would work and work and put his name out there, and it would actually happen. He was offered to play for Steve Sarkeesian at Washington, and the summer before he entered eighth grade, he would commit. This is absolutely nuts, as I remember being a middle schooler, and the idea of going to college was not even on my mind at that point, so Martell was in the spotlight from a young age, and this was four years before he could even sign his national letter of intent. He would originally go to Poway High School in the San Diego area, but after leading him to a 4-7 and seven season, he decided to transfer to the prestigious Bishop Gorman High School, which is located in Las Vegas, Nevada. He had a pretty decorated career there, as he would win the Nevada Gatorade Player of the Year, lead his team to a 15-0 record, and his stat line was pretty absurd. He passed for 2,362 yards and 41 touchdowns, while also rushing for 1,200 yards and 21 touchdowns on the ground. He went 45-0 as a starter, finished second in Nevada history with 7,500 passing yards and 13 scores, and was seen as a five-star quarterback. He was also on the Netflix show QB1 Beyond the Lights, as he was joined by Jake Fromm and Tavon Bowers. As I said earlier, he originally decided to take his talents to the University of Washington when he was only 14 years old. In 2015, he would decide to switch gears, as he would ultimately flip to Kevin Sumlin in Texas A&M, as he modeled his game after Johnny Manziel, and that was probably a major reason why he wanted to be an Aggie. In 2016, though, he would end up decommitting from A&M and would have to find another school. He obviously had offers to everywhere in the world, so where was he going to go? Rumor had it that it would come down to Ohio State and Cal. Ohio State was his dream school, was a big time program, and would be in need of a quarterback eventually, so that was very promising to him. But former Texas A&M offensive coach Jake Spavital was at Cal and the guy who recruited him to A&M, so him staying close to home, playing for the coach he knew best, and potentially saving a program was also something that he considered. He eventually would commit to Ohio State though, and had this to say about it. Quote, Ohio State has been my dream school. I've got a great vibe with the coaches, and it's a place that will prepare me for the next level. According to 24-7 Sports, Tate Martell was a four-star recruit, the number two dual-threat quarterback, and the 56th best player in the class of 2017. He was the biggest name of the 2017 class, and one of the biggest high school names of all time, so him taking his talents to a blue blood program was more than likely going to lead to success, right? Going into his Ohio State football career, he would decide to redshirt during the 2017 season and try to get a little bit better and more experienced in the system. Going into 2018, there would be a quarterback battle between three pretty big names. The first guy was Dwayne Haskins, who was a four-star top 100 player. Then you had Joe Burrow, who was a four-star recruit who sat on the bench. And then you had Tate Martell. The battle would get a little bit easier for Urban Meyer to decide, as Joe Burrow would decide to graduate transfer to LSU. Or you could say he had a pretty decent career from there. So it would come down to Haskins and Tate. And pretty early on in the offseason, Meyer basically said that Haskins was going to be the guy, but Tate would be able to compete later on in the fall and try and push him. He would not end up doing that, and he was named the backup. And while Ohio State was kind of under investigation for one of their coaches, 
Ryan Day would be the interim head coach for their first game against Oregon State. Because they blew up the Beavers so badly, Martell would get a chance to play, and he completed three passes for 33 yards. He wouldn't have his first big game though until the following week, as he would go 10 of 10 for 121 yards with a touchdown pass to Terry McLaurin. It didn't stop there though, as he also carried the ball eight times for 95 yards and a touchdown, and Martell showed that he really could be a good player. The only considerable action you'd see the rest of the year came against Tulane as he threw for 115 yards and also rushed for a touchdown in that game, but from that point on, Haskins would take over, have one of the best passing seasons in Ohio State history, and become a first round pick. Because Ohio State lost to Purdue, they would not get a chance to go to the playoff, so they would have to settle for the Rose Bowl. In 2018, Martell would pass for a total of 269 yards and one touchdown, while also rushing for 128 yards and two touchdowns on the ground, but because Haskins was going off to the NFL, he was now going to get a chance to be that starter in 2019. At least that's what people thought. Now that Urban Meyer has retired, Ryan Day is the new head coach and he needs his first quarterback. This is the first time Tate Martell starts to really fall off, as when Justin Fields decided to transfer to Columbus, he tweeted, quote, a word of advice, don't swing and miss, especially not your second time. He was basically talking smack to Justin Fields about transferring to another school, and this becomes extremely ironic. Martell would later say, quote, why would I leave for someone who hasn't put a single second into this program? To just run away from somebody who hasn't put a single second into workouts, anything like that, and doesn't know what the program is all about, there's not a chance. I will be the starting quarterback, I'm 100% sure on that, and I'm not just going to walk away from something that I've put so much time into, and there's not a chance that I won't go out there and compete for that. Tate Martell backed up his name, and was ready to be the starter no matter what. This would become a terrible take, as two weeks later, he entered his name into the transfer portal. He'd end up deciding to commit to the Miami Hurricanes, where he'd have a good chance to win the starting job, but he'd have to get a waiver first. The NCAA would grant him a hardship waiver, and he'd be eligible to play right away for the Canes. Going into the 2019 season, the battle would come down to Tate Martell and redshirt freshman Jaron Williams. Williams would end up getting the nod, and Martell would actually switch to wide receiver. He wouldn't see the field all year, and despite Miami having quarterback problems, Martell never got a shot there. He ended up completing one pass for seven yards, and his 2019 campaign was extremely disappointing. Going into 2020, apparently Martell had been suspended by the university, and he also decided to opt out of the 2020 season, and obviously he did not play. So far going into 2021, Martell would enter the transfer portal and released a video about how he was going to rebrand himself, make a comeback, and try and save his career. He was now obviously gone from Miami, and in late June of last year, we found out that he'd be transferring to UNLV. He ended up becoming a walk-on, and his father confirmed to 24-7 Sports that was the case, and this took over the internet for a couple of days. All of a sudden, the Rebels actually had a decent amount of hype, and I cannot remember the last time UNLV really had anything going for it. As we all know, he was from Bishop Gorman, so he decided to transfer back home, and maybe by playing for a smaller school near home, he wouldn't have as much pressure on him. He would have a quarterback battle to compete in, though. It come down to Cameron Friel, Justin Rogers, Doug Broomfield, and him, and he ended up finishing fourth on the depth chart and barely got an opportunity to play. Martell would make one appearance as he went two of six for 27 yards without a touchdown or an interception. That was his entire running Rebel career, and after one year, he was already done. A couple months ago, it was announced that Martell was moving on from football, and apparently he is now going to be moving on to business ventures. After all the rumors were swirling, head coach Marcus Arroyo took to Twitter and said, quote, I wanted to give an update on UNLV football and that Tate Martell is retiring and focusing on business ventures. So after being labeled as one of the biggest busts in college football history, Martell failed to save his career at three different schools and ended up completing two passes at the Mountain West level for one of the worst programs in the country. To some people, it's a sad story, and to others, they were happy because he finally got humbled. But in my opinion, while Martell was somewhat annoying in high school, I wanted to see him succeed, and I never root against any player, so it's unfortunate he at least never had one good moment. He will be labeled as one of the biggest busts in college football history, and hopefully he succeeds in the next venture of life and does something that'll make him happy. He'll probably never be able to escape that label, but I hope he gives it his best shot. What do you guys think though? If you're an Ohio State, Miami, or a UNLV fan, let me know why Tate Martell didn't work out for your program. And if you're a fan of him or a critic of him, let me know what you think of him and why his career didn't pan out. Also, give me another player I can take a look at in my next video. Smash that like button if you want to support today's video. Subscribe if you are new. And check out all my other videos on the end screen. I hope to see you guys again soon. But until next time, peace.